Hello again, this is the fourth part of a series of lectures on the clinical application of TADS in orthodontics. This fourth part deals with indications of the use of Now, TADS originally were advised for adults to replace headgears and intermaxillary elastics. They have numerous indications, I've listed some of them. And, uh, the most important which I put top of the list was in mass retraction because it's so common that you would put a TAD in the upper posterior region and retract the whole anterior segment on hooks attached to the wire. Another way which I found in the internet which is quite bizarre and quite traumatic to the soft tissue here and probably even to the tongue is placing the TAD in the mid palatal raphe and attaching an open coil spring to retract upper anterior segment. Another indirect approach is to use this uh, the TAD, the mid palatal raphe, as an anchor unit and you can see that you have uh, attached bonded it to the transpalatal bar and then you can use regular mechanics to retract these anterior teeth without worrying about loss of anchorage. Molar distalization can also be used Notice that here the head type is the cross type, it's not the round type, and the wire is ligated to the TAD and open coil spring to retract the uh, molars directly. Another approach is doing it lingually by also attaching a coil spring and bonding the wire to the molar and to the TAD from the other. Another way is by also indirectly enhancing the anchorage of the interior components and using regular mechanics from the buckle side so that you can retract the molars using an open coil spring. And last then, two other types, which is here there is a retraction jig, and this jig is used in which the, uh, the this jig passes here and then around the wire comes up here. Once you pull this back, it's going to transfer the force only to the molar, retracting it backwards. The last technique is putting the, um, the TAD in the retromolar area and then retracting the tooth directly without the use of wires. But you can be careful about this because it can rotate the molar, so it needs careful observation. Another thing is motor protraction, in which you would place the TAD in anterior region and protract this molar to, create, to close any spaces, especially if you have missing lateral incisors. And here you can see you generally use a power arm. This power arm would elevate the level of the force to a level closer to the center of rotation to decrease the tipping of the medial tipping of these uh, molars. You can also protract molars on, to, on uh, TADs placed in the opposing arch, especially used in class 3 patients where they, or where you have upper spacing but you do not want to put in the class 3 elastics to the lower arch as they will distalize and lingually tip the lower incisors. Molar upright could be done also on the power arm in which you would tilt the roots, tip them easily, and you can tip the crown distally. Impacted canines can be very beneficial, whether lingually or partly. You retract the canine before even bonding, because if you bond this lateral incisor, then you're going to take the root out, and it's going to hit the impacted canine. Sometimes impacted canines, they're so close when they're palatal to the root of the lateral, it is better to retract them first and then start with extruding them. The intrusion of the interior region to hide gummy smiles is a common way of using them. As you can see, you would retract the incisor area to hide this gummy smile. So after finishing the intrusion of the upper, you can put intermaxillary elastics to the lower arch and start to intrude the lower arch as well that uh, by using these as well. Uh, sometimes I've seen that they use double uh, pads in the upper arch and the lower arch and use heavy intermaxillary elastics to close open bites. 
This is done by transferring the closure force to the molar area, and therefore intruding the molars, as well as this force on the alveolar tissue may contribute slightly to extrusion of the incisors and closure of the open. Now, this is another case which had lateral open bite on one side of the arch and instead of putting the intermaxillary elastic to the lower arch and we fear that this these teeth are going to extrude and cause a bent in the cant a cant in the occlusion because of the extrusion of the lower now we disregarded the lower just the uh, elastic from the upper teeth directly to the tad get a true extrusion of the upper arm. This is another case as well where we need to retract and intrude the, upper, the lower arch regardless of the upper arch. Now molar intrusion could be done by a pad placed and attached to buccal attachments or attached to lingual attachments or even better attached to buccal and lingual attachments at the same time. You can use a power chain that runs through the buccal and lingual attachments without having to bond something on the lingual surface. I would use this technique if the molar was a single tooth, but I wouldn't prefer it if it was a total arch in which we would need to intrude the six and seven at the same time. And uh, as you can see, if you needed to move two teeth, you can add a wire and uh, use composite to cement them and pass the power chain in the middle, that way you're going to intrude both premolars. Intrusion on one side of the arch is common when you have canted occlusal plane and you want to intrude just one arch. Another thing is symmetrical expansion or contraction, because regular contraction and expansion of the arch mainly relies on the teeth and 50% or so is going to go dental and only 50 may be for skeletal, but here you're going to rely more on the skeletal because of the tads placed inside, and it's going to be much, much less dentally than skeletally. You can do asymmetric expansion or contraction by pulling, correcting crossbites and intruding these, moving these lingually, and uh, in part intruding them by using... You can track teeth by retracting let's say canines and as you noticed a power arm is being used here to make the line of action as low as possible to minimize the tilting. You can uh, easily move canines and this is a case where I immediately moved a canine that was very far back but one of the drawbacks of moving these without a bracket is that you get rotation of the tooth and as you can see, we've bonded it lingually and are rotating it at the moment to counteract the rotational move. Also, retraction of a dis displaced incisor without placing brackets and just pulling this incisor lingually. Intermaxillary elastics could be used in these cases, as, as you can see, class 3 elastics, and it's very common uh, to use them with some practices to try to decrease the class 3 effect and not adding the bracket on the teeth as this would cause lingual tipping of the incisors rather than true bone growth. But I do remark that these are not tads, these are mini plates, but you can use tads in the same manner, but you probably need some to add a hook to the lower uh, this is another case, as you can see, the lingual tipping of the lower incisors prevents you from adding the class 3 elastic to the lower arch, but it's favorable to add it a tad and make these teeth come forward without the need for bonding the lower arch. Also, as a reverse headgear attachment, instead of attaching it to the molars, if you do not need expansion of the molars, or you're fearing that these molars are going to move forward with the force of the headgear and therefore cause crowding, then you can put tads, four tads here and add some wire bending and these attachments are going to be used with the head. And as you can see, this is also a mini plate in which it's used to retract the maxilla forward on a protraction head. 
Lastly, an enhancing anchorage. Usually we use anchorage by uh, transpilatal bars. But if you make these transpilatal bars, as I showed you before, adherent to a tad, they become much more resistant to movement and their anchorage becomes much more. Or in this case, in which the premolars were attached, therefore they made a good anchorage for the anterior. Thank you for listening. If you like this video, I do appreciate it if you could share it with your friends, like the video, and subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more. Thank you for your listening.